Jumbo fellow dreamers in today's video I am sharing with you my allergy dining tips and tricks for dining at Disney World. But first, speaking of vacation, I have a live webinar class coming up on Monday, June the 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 4 p.m. Pacific, all about the essential oils that I take with me traveling, including the Walt Disney World Resort. So if you are interested in learning about which oils I take, shoot me an email. My email is annysimplelife at gmail.com. I will leave that in the description bar below as well. This class is meant to be kind of an intro class for those who have never really explored the world of essential oils. So if that's you and you want to learn about what essential oils I take with me traveling and how you can too, shoot me an email, anysimplelife at gmail.com. All right, let's get into dining. This video has been requested a number of times from people since I did my live streaming video answering your Disney questions, which was probably two months ago, maybe three months ago. It's taken me that long to make this video, which is a little ridiculous. So I have been to the Walt Disney World Resort as an adult since 2006, pretty much every single year. There have been a couple years here and there where we have skipped and gone other places, uh, but we went twice last year, so maybe that makes up for it, I don't know. Um, I have been as a vegetarian, I have been as a gluten-free vegetarian that also had additional restrictions like um, nuts and uh, nut and seed oils, avocado, banana, there were a couple other things on that list, hummus, <laughs> other things. Anyway, um, and then I went uh, the last two times, uh, three times, just as plain old gluten-free with an allergen to cranberries, which I've had for a very long time. And then um, now this upcoming trip that we are going later this year. Um, I am going to be eating paleo-ish um, modified autoimmune protocol with Mr. Simple Life who has to follow that right now. So lots of dining restrictions over the last few years. So I do have a little bit of information inside knowledge on how you can navigate the world of allergy dining at Disney as well. Part of the reason we go to Disney so much is because they are so good with allergy restrictions. Um, they are so well trained in their kitchen and in their server staff that it just makes allergen diners feel so safe there. And we don't necessarily get that at home when we're eating out. We tend to go to the same like two or three restaurants in our area that we know are allergen friendly and then cook everything else at home. It's just kind of the way it works for most allergen folks. Um, but what Disney has done recently is they've made the process of eating as an allergy diner so, so simple. When you're booking your trip to Disney, you can make your table service dining reservations 180 dollars days in advance, which is pretty far out. Um, I'll give you my favorite restaurants here in a little bit, um, but you can make those dining reservations and then on that reservation, mark what allergens you have in your dining party. And they have a list when you go on Disney's website and you're making your reservation right underneath where you're setting your date and your time of when you want to dine there. They have a little check boxes next to peanuts, tree nuts, um, shellfish, gluten, dairy, eggs eggs, etc., um, soy, and then there's a little other box. So you just mark whichever allergens your dining party has. It doesn't have to be per person, it's just per dining party. And there's also going to be listed a special diets email address, which I will link in the description bar below so you guys can find it. If you have something that is out of the norm, out of the big eight that you need to work around, you can email the special diets team, let them know when you're dining, where you're dining, and what your confirmation number is and uh, what your special dietary restrictions are and giving them that advance notice will guarantee pretty much that you'll have a delicious wonderful meal ready and ready to be cooked in the kitchen for you when you get to your reservation. Now what Disney's doing now and they've just started kind of rolling these out within the last year year and a half is they have allergen menus which are so convenient it's just fantastic. In the past what they would do is they would mark in your reservation if you have an allergen and then automatically a chef would come out to your table and talk to you about your dietary restrictions. That took a little bit of extra time because it would pull the chef away from what they were doing in the kitchen. You'd have to wait a little bit and then you'd be, you know, sitting there for your entire meal about an hour and a half and it just wasn't time efficient. So they started making these allergen menus to 
help to streamline the process. So when you get to your restaurant, let the host or hostess know that you have an allergen. If you marked it on your reservation, they will already know that, but it's good to just kind of reiterate and just say, I'd like to have an allergen menu. And they will probably automatically give you one if they see that you have an allergen on your little receipt thing that they print off. But if not, you know, it's good to ask for that. When you get your allergen menu, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of meals on there. And then underneath each one in small print, it'll say for gluten wheat allergies, for dairy slash eggs slash soy allergies, etc. And um, if you see something on there that's maybe on the menu too that you want to have modified or whatever, you can ask the server about that modification or they can still get a chef to come out and talk to your table just to make sure you feel comfortable dining there. But this process has really streamlined things. So it makes us allergen folks feel less um, on show <laughs> or on display or something um, because it can be a little anxiety inducing when you are kind of like put in this position of being a special person or somebody that needs extra accommodation or being like a pain or whatever you know there is none of that that goes on with Disney especially with these allergen menus it just makes it so much more comfortable and easy for the servers to just take care of it when they already have you know a set meal that is safe for your particular allergens. But don't hesitate to talk to a chef if you feel any questions at all, or if you see um, like there's nothing on the menu that you'd really like and you wanna ask the chef what else they have in the kitchen that they could do for you, they would be more than happy to come out and talk to you and make you a special meal. So a few of my favorite special dining allergen restaurants, I have a lot of them. I've dined very many places at Disney. Um, I'll just go park by park uh, at Epcot. I really like La Hacienda de San Angel. This is at the Mexico Pavilion. It's right on the Lagoon side. Very first pavilion you go to if you're going to the left. In the World Showcase, that's delicious. At, from having a gluten allergy, almost everything on the menu, except for one item, which is like the fish tacos or shrimp tacos, goes, one of those, um, is naturally gluten-free and you can ask for that dish if you want the fish tacos to be made gluten-free. So it's just a very good gluten allergen menu. For a counter service restaurant at Epcot, I really like Sunshine Seasons. They have a whole little allergen section of prepackaged things that are private labeled by Disney, but they're made by Way Better Snacks and by Enjoy Life, which are very commonly allergen friendly brands. We all know what those are. Um, um, so they have that, they have a grill station, which most of those things are naturally gluten and dairy free. Um, you can always go up and ask to talk to a manager, talk to a chef to see what is safe for you. But there are tons of options there. And Sunshine Seasons is in the land pavilion. It's on the first floor. You enter on the second, so you have to go down the stairs, but it's right by Living with the Land and Soren. At the Magic Kingdom, there's actually a new restaurant that has just popped up over the last year or so, and it is the Skipper Canteen. I've heard very good things about dining there with allergens. I also like Be Our Guest, which is in Beast Castle over in New Fantasyland. And um, they are kind of a combo. They are um, lunchtime is more counter service and then dinnertime is more table service. But they have had really good success with all of their allergen menu items as well. Everybody has had really good reviews. For a counter service restaurant at the Magic Kingdom, I really like Liberty Tree Tavern. They do a great job. They have gluten-free fish and chips, if that's something that's interesting to you. Um, but lots of different allergen options. This restaurant is located in Liberty Square. If you go straight towards that castle and you go around just right around it, um, it's just straight back, kind of by the Haunted Mansion and Hall of Presidents. Really great restaurant. Plus it has an upstairs seating area as well as a downstairs seating area. So it's a little bit quieter up there and you have a really nice view overlooking at the Liberty Square Riverboat. There's a great snack option right outside that door there too. And it's wonderful for us paleo folks. They have a sweet potato slash potato baking stand. You can just get yourself a plain sweet potato and just eat it as you walk around the park. I think that's pretty awesome. Going over to Animal Kingdom, they actually have an allergen kiosk, which is awesome. It's not, not really original name, um, but that's what it's called. And if you're heading towards the Tree of Life, kind of like you're going back to Kilimanjaro Safari, it'll be on your right hand side, not too far from the Festival of Lion King new section where they moved it out of Camp Mini Mickey. And they have a of allergen friend friendly items, including some Aaron McKenna's NYC baked goods, which I'll get into that in a second, which are um, gluten-free, they're dairy and egg-free, they are soy-free, 
And they're also um, tree nut, peanut free, except they do use coconut. So you just kind of have to, whatever, you know, monitor that. Uh, but really delicious baked goods. You would have no idea that they were allergen free. So that's delightful. For a counter service restaurant at the Animal Kingdom, I really like Flame Tree Barbecue. Always have great options there. And then for a table service restaurant, uh, Yak and Yeti is a good option. Going to Hollywood Studios, the ABC Commissary towards the back of the park. That's currently being demolished pretty much because they are totally redoing most of Hollywood Studios is a lovely counter service restaurant with lots of healthy options. And then from a table service standpoint, 50s Primetime Cafe is excellent, as well as the um, Hollywood Brown Derby. If you like salads, they have an amazing Cobb salad. As far as resorts go, um, different hotels and things, I think my absolute favorite restaurant on Disney property is the Yachtsman Steakhouse that is at the Yacht Club, which is in the Epcot area resorts. We have always had amazing service there. They have always gone above and beyond to get us things. Now, this is kind of goes back to those allergen menus. Um, we got the allergen menu at the um, Yachtsman Steakhouse when we were there in November. This was the first time that we saw it, and it didn't have my husband's favorite thing, which is the truffle mac and cheese, what well, was at that time. And um, when he didn't see it on the menu, he's like asking the server, and I talked to a chef, and so the chef came out. He asked, could you make me a gluten-free version of the truffle mac and cheese? The chef said, absolutely. And what he did, he actually had to go get gluten-free pasta from a neighboring restaurant because they didn't have any there. No questions asked. They didn't complain whatsoever, at least not to us. <laughs> and he had a wonderful, delicious, gluten-free truffle mac and cheese. So that just goes to show you that these chefs really do go above and beyond to make sure their customers are happy. In addition to that, if you like uh, like Italian type food, Il Molino at the Swan is my favorite Italian restaurant on Disney property. This is also in the Epcot area resorts at the Walt Disney World Swan, right near actually the Yacht and Beach Club. And they do an amazing job with uh, like gluten-free options or you know vegan options, whatever you have, they can accommodate. And it's super delicious meal every single time. We've never been disappointed. If you're looking for more pub type of food, food. The ESPN Club at the Boardwalk, also in the Epcot area resorts, is awesome. They have loaded nachos, they have burgers, they have uh, just like normal deli sandwiches. Really great option there too. They don't take reservations, but they do have the allergen menu. Um, so you can just kind of luck of the draw. Hopefully you just go get a walk up, get a table. Um, it's normally not that busy unless there's some big sporting event going on where they're going to be broadcasting it on the TV. Uh, just great. They do an excellent job as well. Around the Magic Kingdom Resort Loop, like the Monorail Loop, we love Kona Cafe. That is at the Polynesian on the top floor, right outside the monorail. You go in and it's to the left, and it's fabulous. It is kind of like a Hawaiian fusion cuisine. Really great burgers there. I had a really good um, vegetarian noodle bowl, which was like gluten-free noodles, gluten-free soy sauce, like a teriyaki kind of sauce, and a bunch of like steamed but really fresh hearty vegetables. So, so good. It's probably my favorite meal on property. So if I'm eating grains by the time we go to Disney, I might get that noodle bowl because it's just so delicious. But maybe I'll just order the veggies on their own. They were just like super delicious. I love it. Jumping over towards Animal Kingdom, the Animal Kingdom Lodge has one of my favorite restaurants there, and it's called Sanaa, and it's down on the lower level. I think it's the Kandani Village. I can't remember exactly um, where in Animal Kingdom it is, but if you pull up, the person at the front gate will be able to tell you where to park. And it is wonderful. It's kind of like an African fusion cuisine. The chefs there have always been awesome, and they have a bread sampler where they make homemade I think it's vegan, non-bread, and it's like actual bread, and you can get it with lots of different dips. Oh, it's so wonderful. And then zipping over to the Disney Springs area, they've had a lot of restaurants pop up over the last few months. I've heard really good things about Morimoto's, which is like an Asian type of place. Also, STK, which is a steakhouse, has had great reviews as well. And of course, like I mentioned before, Aaron McKenna's NYC is a pretty much overarching allergen free bakery. It is gluten free. It is vegan. So no milk, no casein, no eggs. Um, it's also peanut free, but they do use um, 
coconut, so it's not exactly tree nut free unless you are okay with having coconut. And absolutely wonderful. Every baked good there that I've ever had has been totally delicious. So if you need a sweet treat, that's the place to go for that. At any Disney resort you're staying in, there is a food court and you'll have no problem getting an allergen friendly item from there as well. But they also have the private labeled snacks, kind of like what I talked about before. So they have um, Enjoy Life is a big brand of theirs. They have the uh, fruit and seed mix Mixes. They have the chocolate bars. They also have the crunchy cookies that are all private labeled Disney, but they on the back, if you turn them over, you can see that they are Enjoy Life brand. They also have way better snacks there too. I had a really good, it was a sweet potato lime chip, and they had one other one that I can't remember what it was, uh, but it was really, really good. If you wanted an actual meal, you could just go up, ask to talk to a manager, and they can walk you through what would be safe for you, and if something you know needs to be cleaned before they make it or change their gloves, or whatever, they'd be more than happy to do that for you. This video is going to be 50 years long. I am sorry, I could just talk about Disney dining for forever. It's just like my thing. So how we generally in the past have navigated allergy dining, what we would do is we would go to the grocery store or pack some food items in our suitcases and bring it down with us so we'd have breakfast in the room. We would bring a packed lunch with us to the parks just to save a little bit of money. And then every day we would have a table service meal. And we would like to do those table service meals before the meal dinner time rush. So somewhere between 4.30 before five o'clock. So 4.30, 4.45, generally a little bit quieter in the restaurants, and um, the kitchen has probably just been cleaned and ready to go for the dinner time hour, so you can get your food a little bit quicker. They don't have to do all of that washing of the pots before they put your meal in. It just makes it a little bit of an expedited process, and it's a much better atmosphere as well. So if you're somebody who has a lot of allergies, you're used to cooking for yourself at home, much like us. I cook everything <laughs> from scratch, like everything. So what we're gonna be doing for this upcoming trip, it's gonna be a little bit different, but I'll just kind of give you a little insight into what we're doing. So we do rent a car, that's just something that we do. We've taken Magical Express before, which is Disney's free transportation service, but for us, we like to go to the grocery, we like to come and go as we need to, so it just works better for us. So we pick up our car and go to either the Whole Foods, that's pretty much right by Disney, or there is a great Publix at Celebration, it's just the city like right next door to Disney, where Gaylord Palms is. It's right in that same area. And um, that Publix is, my opinion, the best Publix near Disney. I just love it. They do a great job there. So we're going to pick up groceries. We're going to get to our hotel. We're staying at the Boardwalk again, which we've stayed at before in 2013. And we're staying in a studio villa. So we rented Disney Vacation Club points. I have a video about how to do that. I'll put it in the description bar below. So our studio will have a kitchenette, which is really convenient. So it has a separate sink area. It has a microwave. It has a kind of a dorm size fridge, but it has a little spot for us to put freezer things right at the top. Um, so it's just a nice little cooking area. So we'll load our groceries in there. But what I do before I leave home, and I'll do a video on this once we get closer to the trip, is I cook a ton of meat ahead of time and freeze it. <laughs> so I make like meatloaf, meatballs, hamburgers, chicken, whatever, all sorts of things. And I freeze them kind of together in this lump. <laughs> and I put it inside a hard-sided cooler inside a carry uh, or a checked luggage suitcase and put a bunch of freezer packs in there. We have a direct flight from where I come from. It's under two hours, so I have no problem. Everything stays frozen by the time that we get there, so it just works out well. But uh, something else that I'm bringing with me this year, actually I have two things, I'm so excited. The first thing is I am bringing my Hot Logics. I have two of them, and I have talked about this in previous videos. I love them. They're like little slow cookers, and they're amazing. And I also, for my birthday this year, from my parents, got an electric skillet. So having that electric skillet will allow us to have a separate cooking space that's not just just a microwave all the time. I don't love microwaving my food, so I would much rather lug a skillet down to Disney and cook in the skillet mostly than cook everything in the microwave, especially if we're gonna be eating three meals mostly in our hotel room. So this skillet's really awesome. It's not heavy, really, at all. The Hot Logics are really light as well. So the heaviest thing, really, is actually the, the glass container that I heat the food up in in the Hot Logic but it'll totally be underneath the 50 pounds weight limit that Southwest gives us, so it's not a huge deal. Um, but I'll be making everything, eggs, which for me, because I'm not 
will be modified autoimmune protocols. So I'll be making eggs in the morning, um, having some fruit for lunch and dinner. We'll be doing some meat and some vegetables and some fruit with that. We might be introducing grains by that point. I don't know. We we'll just kind of have to see, play it by ear. But it'll just be nice to have another cook surface that's not just a microwave. All right, guys. Well, that is the gist of Disney dining with allergies. If you have any questions at all about dining, if it's a specific restaurant or whatever, um, leave a comment below and I'd be happy to answer that for you. I'll leave a couple links below as well that'll be helpful, one of which is the allergen menus. The Disboards has a really great thread that shows all of the allergen menus, like literally all of them. You can scroll for days and just see them all, so I'll leave that thread in the description bar below. I also recommend checking out the Gluten-Free Dairy-Free at Walt Disney World blog. Sarah Norris does a great job talking about all sorts of allergies, not just gluten and dairy, um, and it's pretty much everything at Disney World, just like a one-stop resource for allergy dining. Also, there is an allergy-free mouse website that I will link in the description bar below as well. They do a great job also with talking about how like restaurant reviews and suggestions and, and all sorts of things. So all those links will be in the description bar below. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me today. If you are interested in my free webinar, which is taking place on Monday, June 27th, 7 p.m. Eastern time, I'm talking all about travel essential oils, shoot me an email, anniesimplelife at gmail.com, and I will send the webinar link right out to you. If you haven't already and you'd like to, hit that button down below, subscribe so you never miss a Daily Dreamland video. Kiss someone you love today, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.